we'll start working on the topic of time series in this video and we're gonna draw the analogy between time series data and cross-sectional data. So what's cross-sectional data? It's what we've been doing so far. Basically, we are measuring effects of certain variables on outcome variables at a certain point in time. So the time is defined and we just wanna see what the effect is at that point. But over here, we're measuring the effect of variables across time. So how do they change uh, with passing of time depending how we measure it? So for instance, we have this example, let's give some meaning and then we'll see what it all means. Uh, we have, as you can see, again, a regression line with linear parameters. And based on this regression line, we're gonna design the conditions that we need for our uh, coefficients, for our slope coefficients to be unbiased, to be the best linear unbiased estimators. So how do we interpret this? We're measuring sales. Let's say we sell jeans, we're a fashion company at a certain point in time. For the sake of the example, let's say that we measure the time in years. So one unit of measurement is one year. That's how we read it. That's how we read it. So if we want to know how can we project sales for 2017, then we must know what's going to be the effect of the change in price in 2017 and what's going to be the effect of having the assets in 2017. So everything is based on that specific time. Now, what do we have? We have the constant. How do we read the constant? Well, the constant is the expected value of sales when there is no effect from price and no effect from the assets. So if pricing doesn't affect our sales, if assets doesn't affect our sales, that is basically the average sales that we can expect. That's our constant. Now, what is beta one? Beta one is going to be the effect of the price on sales. So for instance, if in 2017, let's say the price of our jeans increases by $1, the price of our jeans increases by $1. And let's say for the sake of the example that beta one is equal to beta one is going to be equal to 0 0.33. Then how, how we read this is that when price of our jeans goes up by $1. So when price of our jeans increases by $1, the sales of our jeans is going to go up in 2017 by 0 0.33 times a thousand dollars because the units that we measure the sales is in thousands of dollars. So that's going to be 0 0.33 times a thousand dollars. And if we solve the math, that's three, three, zero, right? So $330 more sales in 2017 if price goes up by $1. That's literally how we read it, assuming it's significant. But we, we do assume that for the sake of, you know, of the example. Now, what's beta two is the effect of assets on sales. So if in 2017, the assets increase by one unit, however, we measure that. Let's say we, we mean assets the units of producing the, ge the jeans. So there's probably some machines that people use to make that clothing, that, how do you call that, denim, I think. Well, those units, if it, if it goes up by one, if we have one more of that facility, let's write it over here. If assets increase by one unit, one more facility to produce jeans, then assuming that beta two, let me give an example. What could it be? Let's say 0 0.17, 0 0.17. Well, that means that our sales are gonna go up by 0 0.17 times a thousand dollars times $1,000, 0 0.17 times $1,000, that would be equal to $170. So the effect of assets on sales in 2017 is going to be $170. Sales would go up by $170. What is UT? This is the unexplained term in 2017 that affects sales. So this is in 2017. Remember that we can never measure precisely because there are variables that we cannot, uh, we cannot account for. We cannot control for, or we do not know what they are. So this is the unexplained term that affects our sales. For instance, what could it be? It could be the economic state in the world. So do we have a recession or do we have growth? Well, we don't really know because maybe in Netherlands we have growth, but in another place we have a recession. So that's very variable. We cannot define, you know, a specific measurement, whether we're in a recession or in a growth, we cannot see that, but it definitely affects our sales because that affects whether people have money to buy jeans or not. So economic state would be one of them, economic state. Another thing what could be, uh, you know, things that happen internally in the company. So the, the jeans company, do they have maybe people going on strike? Like the, they form labor unions and they think they're underpaid. So if there is a crisis internally, so internal state of the company, internal state, then that also is going to affect sales because if people think they're underpaid and they don't come to work, who's going to operate the machines to make the jeans? In that case, sales would diminish. So that's also going to affect the sales in the company, but we cannot measure that. We do not have access to data what's happening internally in the company. So these are examples of uh, terms that would affect the dependent variable, but we cannot see, we, we do not know. So that would be the highlight, that would be a practical, you know, example. Anytime you work with these things, 
try to give um, you know meanings to the variables so that you don't work just with the letters like y x y minus one things of that nature it has to have some sense this is some sense of it based on this regression line in the next videos we're going to design the conditions so that we have a time series with blue estimators